In this video, I'm going to keep talking about the collections interface, and specifically I'm going to talk about what iterable is and what iterator is and what the relationships are. And finally, uh, what we're going to do is actually build a new collection that implements iterable and has an iterator on it. So um, iterable is a interface as well as iterator. They're both interfaces. And what you do in practice to use this is you have a class, you make it implement iterable, and then in that, when you implement that interface, you'll have a method on there uh, called iterator, and then you'll also have to create an iterator that gives you access to the values of your collection. And you can see in Java docs, these are completely different interfaces, but you're going to use them both together when you actually implement a collection. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create an array that's kind of a um, it's kind of a wrapper. So uh, like it, uh, array um, array list already implements uh, iterable because it's implementing list interface. So we're just going to wrap that just so you can see how that works. Um, so we're going to start fresh. I kind of did this is a test already, but we're going to do a new class and we're going to call it. Um, custom array list and we're not going to run this directly so I'm just going to hit finish and it'll be uh, uh, just a class and we're going to implement implement iterable and we're going to keep that T there because it's going to be a generic and we're going to let Eclipse fix this for us we're going to um, add the unimplemented method which is the iterator method. And we're also going to add the type parameter T so that we have this generic. And that's just a generic, it's a placeholder for a class. So you have to imagine that it could be any class where that T is. Okay, so now inside of this, we have an iterator and we're going to have an underlying data structure and that underlying data structure will be a list. And we'll have the list be T and we'll have a, um, uh, my list. And this is going to be an array list. New array list. And uh, the other thing we're going to do now is create a custom um, iterator because this iterator interface needs to return an iterator. So we're gonna create our own iterator that, that uh, iterates over this list here. And what we could do, of course, is just return the list iterator, but we don't want to do that. We want to do our own so you can actually see how this works. Um, so we'll say public class custom iterator implements iterator. And what we're going to need to do is fix this up going to add the unimplemented methods and the unimplemented methods are going to be has next and next and our custom iterator uh, as you see before our iterable we're going to pass in our own generic in here so we're going to add a special generic and it'll be different from the one up here just because it's in the same class so that we can see that um, And instead of object, we're going to return E because it could be anything. It could be uh, any class we want it to be. And the other thing I'm going to do so that our iterator gets constructed correctly, I'm going to say int uh, index position equals zero. And the reason we have index position zero is because we want to uh, have, have a state in our iterator so that when we loop over stuff, we track where we are inside of this list. And then, of course, internally, I'm going to have my own list. List of E, uh, we'll call it the internal list. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and create my custom iterator um, constructor. And it's going to create a list, or it's going to take this list in, internal list. And we'll say this dot internal list uh, 
sorry about that, internal list equals internal list. And has next is our is the thing we need to think about here because we are going to start with state of zero. So we're going to be at the first index position and then we want to run through to the next index position. So I need to check to see if it still has stuff left in it or it's going to blow up when I try to get the next position. So I'm going to say if internal list dot size is uh, less than or equal to the index position plus one, then I'm going to return um, false. So what will happen is if my size is five and my index position is four, then it'll say five. And the problem is I'll be out of bounds basically. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll return false. And then for this one, I'll return true. And that might give me a problem. I think on my other one, I did that in reverse. I said, yes, yeah, iterate is size greater than. Uh, let's just reverse that just to be safe. I don't want to have it blow up on us later. So in this case, if the size is greater than the index position, it's going to be valid. And of course, size is offset by one because Java is zero indexed. So size is going to have essentially plus one where your index positions are. So if we have, um, if we still have things left in it, we're going to return true to has next. If we don't have things left in it, we're going to return false. That's all there. That's all we're really doing. And this is going to be very easy. The next because we already have a list underneath. We're just going to say um, e val. This is a placeholder again. Uh, internal list. So this this is a placeholder for a class. It could be any class. Um, dot get uh, index position. Then we're going to increment the index position. Uh, index position. And then we'll return uh, val. So we'll return the value for this. The last thing we need to do is get our iterator constructed correctly. And the way we're going to do that is return new custom, uh, sorry, custom iterator, and our we're going to pass in our list. And I am going to pass the generic t in here just to make sure that gets passed down correctly. So now we have wrapped a list. We've wrapped our array list, and we could do funny stuff with this. We could say has next. Um, we could have ha we could have the iterator skip positions. We could do um, plus equals two rather than just incrementing to the next one. So we could make it skip in strange ways. Uh, with your own custom iterator, you can you can make a loop work however you want now. So um, we're going to have a, a custom list runner or custom array list runner. So um, we're going to call this custom array list runner. And this is just going to have a public static void main on here so that we can run this application. Okay, now I have that custom array list. I'm going to create an instance of it. I'm going to use the type string in here. So, I mean, uh, I think we can call this whatever, like my custom array. Uh, right. And let's start adding stuff to it. Oh, we missed one. We missed one method. Uh, we do want to expose some way to add this. So I'm going to make a public void add method and it'll be a T val. So this is the placeholder for the class. In this case, we'll be using string in here. So I'm just going to call add a string into here, but you say T because this is the generic. So I'll say my list dot add val. Okay, and that's how we're going to uh, interact with this list. I'm not going to implement remove and all that kind of stuff because we just don't actually need to. Um, so we'll say my custom array dot add um, test value one, and I'm going to make sure we add these with uh, indicator of which which order they are because we want to make sure the iterator prints these out the same 
So you can see there's a one, there's a two. I'll add one more. Um, so we have three things we're gonna iterate over. And next, you're gonna see the cool thing is we can just use a loop with this. So because we implement we implemented iterable, uh, we can just loop over this, just like it's any other collection object, simply because we implemented iterable. Okay, so let's let's print these out. These are just going to be strings, so let's print them. Okay, run as Java application, and there we go. Print it out one, print it out two, print it out three. So under the hood, what Java is actually doing, it's calling, it's calling uh, has next, and then if it's true, it's calling next, and then the next actually gets put into this value right here. So what that iterator does, if you give something the iterable interface, it gives you an iterator, and then that loop, it's calling has next and it's calling next. And so what we can do is call plus equals two, and we can say my custom array dot add the fourth value. And now we can run this and see, actually it only printed the first one and it skipped to the third one. And because the fifth one would have been out of bounds, it didn't print that and the loop ended. So we have the power to completely customize how our iterator works in this loop natively. Um, and so that, that's kind of just a broad overview of, of what iterable is, uh, what iterator is, and how you can uh, custom create your own collection that has its own internal behavior that does uh, anything you want, essentially. Uh, thanks for watching.